Hi, you've clicked on to today's Tropical Tidbit for Tuesday. Over here in the Atlantic, our biggest story right now is Tropical Storm Emily over here in the Eastern Caribbean got named yesterday, finally, after developing a closed circulation, which is still not all that well defined here. There is a lot of convection, though, associated with the system. And uh, if we go into the floater, we can see that there's a new ball of convection developing right in here. The center of this is actually lying under the western side of this convective ball as located recently by Recon. And it is interesting though that this position is farther east than the NHC was trying to put it late last night and early this morning, meaning that the system is not moving quite as fast as the NHC thought, which means that the system has a better opportunity to try to intensify gradually because the fast forward movement westward was not going to be that great for it as it makes it hard for the circulation to tighten up. But if it is moving a little bit slower, it may try to get pulled underneath the convective ball if that can remain sustained and try to get this to finally strengthen. The recon only found a pressure of 1,007 millibars as of about 15 minutes ago and the circulation is really not all that well defined in the wind field that they are seeing there. But this is continuing to try to fire up the thunderstorms and will continue to try to intensify gradually over the next couple of days. This is the radar shot out of there. The center is somewhere in here and it's really not all that structured right now. This convection down here is not organizing into significant organized bands like we would like to see and the center is not all that well defined either here or on the recon. They even made a note in their first vortex message of a weak radar presentation and supported by this I would definitely agree that the radar pre presentation is not all that great with this right now. However again lots of convection this may try to get its act together with time over here. One of its biggest problems right now is dry air. If we look at the total precipitable water here, blue and green indicate dry air, red and orange indicate moisture. Emily's in here. Notice that we have a strong tongue of dry air getting pulled across the Dominican Republic and getting wrapped right into the core of Emily right now. Just right into the core. This yellow here is an old burst that got already injected into the eastern side, so we have a couple of different injections of dry air coming into the storm right now and getting wrapped in. This is going to be a problem for the next several days before this can get mixed out and thus will limit intensification of this storm as long as dry air continues to get wrapped in over here which will limit convection but again as long as that convection is firing or at least trying to like it has been all night eventually this could get mixed out and allow Emily to strengthen and become more organized with time. Now if we look at the water vapor imagery, again we can see the dry air surrounding Emily but we're going to look at this more for steering right now and also for the troughiness out in the western Atlantic. This is very noticeable right in here. This is the trough moving off the eastern seaboard coming to pick up Emily. There's also a little bit harder to see a little elongated trough oriented zonally just to the north of the Caribbean and north of Emily. You can kind of see the cirrus clouds being blown off to the east over here and what this is doing is limiting how much Emily's outflow can expand to the north and northwest and it is also lightly shearing the northern side of the system or moderately shearing it which is also helping to push the convection slightly east of the surface center. Now this laying trough here is not allowing it to really expand over and up into this region and the anticyclone over Emily is not allowed to breathe very well and the storm is not able to be ventilated very well. As soon as this trough off the eastern seaboard digs in towards the east here it will probably kick this trough out and this trough will replace the general flow over the western Atlantic with a southwest flow allowing the upper high over Emily to expand a little bit more in this direction as she comes west northwest which should allow a little bit more of a favorable environment as she is nearing the dimension. Dominican Republic within the next couple of days, but it still won't be that ideal of an environment. Now notice how this trough is digging in very deep over here, reaching down towards the northern Bahamas. This means that Emily is likely going to start feeling this trough pretty soon and making her turn towards the west, northwest, and northwest. This is the steering layer for this morning in the mid-levels. Notice that we have the big Texas ridge over the south, we have the big Atlantic ridge, Azores high in here, and then we have a very clear break in between with this trough in here, and the edge of the high is in here, which means that Emily should start her northward turn pretty soon in here towards this weakness and start moving west-northwest or northwest. Here's the European model, the colors showing 500 millibar heights and the white lines are mean sea level pressure. This is 24 hours out. Notice the trough is digging in in here and uh, where Emily should be right in here starting to move northwest 
And if we go out to 72 hours, though, the trickiness to the steering pattern is that this trough leaves pretty fast. And by 72 hours, you can see that it's starting to leave. And we have the Atlantic Ridge trying to build back into the north of where Emily would be. Now, the European here doesn't show Emily really developing, has it over eastern Cuba here as an open system. And it is rather interesting to see that the global models now, none of them, even the GFS dropped the system last night. The global models don't want to strengthen Emily very much, perhaps a test of to the unfavorability of the pattern around her right now and perhaps the dry air and the upper level pattern suppressing her growth at this time. It's interesting to see that the global models don't even want to develop her, so we'll have to see how that develops over time. I think they're a little bit overdone on keeping her dissipated, but we will see how it goes over the next few days. It'll be something to watch. But if, if we talk about the steering, this trough is leaving. So this ridge is building back in, which means that more of a west-northwest movement may resume over the Bahamas, getting this to come pretty close to Florida. Now, with this big ridge sitting over the south, again, west-northwest motion is going to be limited here. And thus, I don't think this is a gulf and I don't think that this is going to get through the Caribbean because this trough will be too deep in here towards the Bahamas initially during the next 24 to 48 hours. This will get drawn north across, I think, the Dominican Republic and then into the Bahamas, at which point it will probably try to sneak pretty close to the Florida East Coast. And then again, with a northwest jet on average aloft across the eastern seaboard, this will want to recurve out very tightly off to the northeast. It will not want to make a sweeping curve up towards the Carolinas. I know the HWRF has tried to get it close. It won't make it. It'll recurve out very fast in here. Even if it gets close to the Florida coast or over Florida, it will not be able to hit North Carolina on the way out, most likely. So if we go back over here, the track of this should start to come north today, and I would expect this to start moving west-northwest, perhaps not too fast, but gradually curving up, probably crossing the Dominican Republic in here, at which point it will probably try to stay curving a little bit back towards the west-northwest, getting close to the Florida east coast, and then trying to curve out very sharply to the east. Now, if we turn on what the not the fronts, the track points from the NHC, notice that the NHC is way back here over Haiti, by what is this 36 no 48 for 50 54 hours out here this is a little bit too far southwest, I think. I think the trough will pull this up over the Dominican Republic. And then I don't agree with the gradual sweeping turn off to the northwest here by the National Hurricane Center. As the trough leaves, the ridge should build in and make this curve first north and then move west-northwest. Again, a slight bent track in both ways instead of a gradual sweeping turn out. This kind of a track implies that the trough is strengthening over time and this is continuing to move out. The ridge should build in a little bit more and make this trough a little little bit more bent like this and then try to make its turn out. So right now what I'm saying is this should get pretty close to Florida. Pretty close will probably affect the Bahamas. I can't guarantee whether this is going to be a landfall. This forecast is very difficult, has a lot of variables involved and a lot going into it. And a lot of a lot will depend on the strength of this storm. I could see this becoming a moderate tropical storm before landfall in the Dominican Republic, but then we have to figure out whether it's going to survive on the other side of Hispaniola. The tall mountains in here are up to 10,000 feet tall in the center of the island. That can really destroy a storm. The weaker storms do have more potential to strengthen on the other side if they survive. So that's the big question is whether Emily will survive. And with the global models not liking the chances of her strengthening in a favorable environment, it may be that she doesn't survive the trip at all. But we will see. If she does survive, I could see her trying to reorganize and become a moderate tropical storm, maybe a strong tropical storm at best here in this area as she tries to recurve. But it's a long way off. What we can really do right now is forecast the intensity up until the Dominican Republic, at which point it's anybody's guess, really, as to how she will look on the other side. And once we see her on the other side, we will, of course, have a better idea of how strong she will be in this area. So again, she will get pretty close to Florida. Can't really say for sure whether she will make a landfall in southeast Florida or not, but it will be close, and she will be curving out rather sharply to the northeast after that. So again, as I've been saying, the only real threat for a U.S. landfall is south Florida at this point. The rest of the state should keep an eye on it in the southeast here, but it is likely a Florida issue if it's going to be a U.S. issue at all. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.